Hello there, it's me Silverly B, and today I bring you part 6 of our little farm game tutorial. Now, our little farm is not so little anymore, and maybe our little tutorial is not so little either. I know that I said that part 6 would be the last part, but it's not. This video was getting too long and I decided it would be better to just separate them in two parts. So this is going to be part 6 and part 7 is going to pick up where we left off here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding this three additional mechanics into our little game. That is watering, fertilizing and buying plot. But on this part, we're just going to be dealing with the UI. This is the interface of this part of the game. So we're just going to be making the button and managing which button is selected. The functions for watering and fertilizing and buying the plot, they are going to be dealt with on the next part of the tutorial. So let's begin. So for starters, we're going to be importing these new sprites that I made just for these mechanics. So here on our sprite folder, just like our farm items, we're going to be importing our farm items extra that you can find on the GitHub link down on the description below with all the project resources, okay? So here we have it and we're going to be adjusting it just like we did for the farm items. We're going to be changing, we're going to be changing the sprite mode from single to multiple. And here the pixels per unit is going to be 198 and we can change the filter mode. Okay, we can hit apply and go to the sprite editor in order to correctly separate our sprites. Okay, and here we can just go with automatic and the pivot is going to be on the center. You can slice it. We just need to change the pivot for these two sprites because we're dealing with the plants here and as we know, the plants are supposed to have their pivot on the bottom. So changing here the pivot to bottom center for these two sprites, we can then hit apply. And when we look on our project, here we have all of our items just like we need. Okay, so you can see here if we go into the grid, okay, we can drag and drop a plot of land. This is going to be the dry plot of land and this is going to be the plot of land that hasn't been unlocked by the player. Okay, so we can delete these two and we can start working on our tools. So the interface for our tools is going to be here on the canvas where we already have our store, okay? And you can work this interface however you like, okay? So mine is not the best at all and if you like to design interfaces you can make it so much better than this one. But what I'm going to be doing is first, here on our scroll view, you can see that the height is 350. And if we adjust it right here, you can see that our plants only go so far as the size of our scroll view. So all you gotta do is check to see what the size of the height you want. To me, 270 is looking fine. So when I hit pause, I could just replace the height over here with 270. Okay, and what I'm going to be doing now is making all of our buttons for these three different tools that we're going to be adding. We're going to be placing all of our buttons right here after our plant store, okay? So to do so, we're going to start by making an empty game object. This is going to be our tool store. We can place it down here. And also we can add a grid component, okay? So we can add a grid layout group. Because we're going to be making a row, this means we only want a single row with three columns for each of our buttons. In order to do so, we just need to change the constraint from flexible here on our grid layout group to fixed row count. We only want one row, okay? And right here, in order to better visualize 
how our buttons are going to look like, we can right click our tool store and add a UI button. And you can see exactly where this button is going to be located. We can change the name, for instance, to the water button. So we know that this is going to be the watering button. And right over here, we can see that there is a text. And we're not going to be deleting it now because we're going to be moving it later. First, on our water button, we can change the source image to this sprite right here, where we have our button. And as you can see, it's quite large. We're not going to be needing a button so large. So here on our tool store, we can change the cell size from a square of 100 by 100 to something more reasonable, such as 80 by 80. Let's check to see how it looks. To me, it still looks a bit too big because we're going to be needing to put a price into it. So I'm going to be making it smaller, so maybe 70 by 70. And this looks okay to me. You can adjust it however you like, change the cell size or make the button different. And here we're going to be changing the tool store that you can see it's 100 by 100. We're going to be change the width of it to 260 so that our button can be better located, okay? So when we hit play, we can see how it looks. To me, this looks fine, but maybe when we're scrolling our store, you can see that the distance between the button and the store is very little. In order to fix this, we can just add padding into the grid layout group. So here, we're going to be adding about 10 of padding to the top, okay? Now, in order to change the text, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be lowering it so it's below our button. We're going to change the color so we can see. So we're going to make it lighter. And we're going to be changing the font to the font that we used on the other texts of the game, okay? So here, just drag and drop it. You can see how it looks. This text is going to be the pricing, so we're going to change it from button to just say zero, okay? I'm sorry, just say zero. So dollar sign and a zero. We can also change the font size to something bigger so we can see it better. So about 20, 20 looks good. And for the text, this is just it. We are going to be having the price of each of our tools and since the fertilizing and the buy plot tool have a cost, I'm also making sure that the water has a cost as well. Even though the price is zero, I'm showing it because I'm going to be showing the price of the other tools. But on your own, you can show the price however you like. You can even hide the price for the water since it's null. And that's it. So here on our water button, we just need a reference to the water itself. So it's going to be our sprite. We can just go here on our UI. We can add an image and it's just going to be the icon. You can rename it in order for it to fit. We're just going to be stretching it. So Alt Shift and select this one where we stretch it around the base of the button. And we are also going to be putting a padding about five should be fine, maybe 10, let's see. Yeah, 10 looks fine. So top 10 and here on the right, it's also 10. And here on the bottom is also going to be 10. We can also go here to our sprites and on our icon, we can drag and drop this farm item, okay? We can preserve its aspect and this looks fine for me, okay? So if we want three different buttons, we can just duplicate this button that we've just made and here we have the three of them. As you can see, they are not separated by anything because here on our tool store where we had the grid layout group, you can see there is no spacing between each cell. Since this one is a row, the only spacing we care for is the X spacing. You can check to see what looks better for you. I think 25 looks best. Especially because if we add a spacing of 25, it's going to cover all of the width of this plant store and the tool part of it. Okay, so when we hit play, you can see it's the same size if you discount the handle right here. 
to me this looks good we're just going to be organizing here so here we can say it's the fertilizing button and we can change the icon right here so i'm gonna select the fertilizer icon and down here we can change this name from water button to by plot and we need to change the icon as well okay so this is how it's looking right now when we hit play you can see it but for now all of these icons they don't do anything what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be setting up the functions for each of these buttons okay so before we can start selecting the buttons Another thing that I forgot is right here on our text, you can see that all of them are costing zero for now. And I know that on the plant store, I tried my best to make it all set through code. But since we only have three tools, I'm going to be setting all of this manually. So I'll just say it's $10. Sorry, 10 and right over here, I'm going to say it's 800. Okay, great. Now we have to go to our farm manager to deal with selecting or deselecting a pool. And just like we did over here on the plant, we're going to be needing a variable for whether or not it is selecting a tool just like we did here on is planting for whether or not it was selecting a plant. And we need a reference to which tool was selected. So first, I'm going to be asking for a bool. That is going to be whether or not a tool is selected. And of course, at the beginning, it's going to start as false. And the way we're going to be identifying which tool is selected is through an int. For our plants, we used a plant item because it was a class that we've created. Since this is so small, we're just going to be using an int and using a switch case to direct to the right function. So we're going to be asking for the selected tool. At start, we're going to say it's zero, but we have to keep in mind that number one is going to be the water <laughs> number two is going to be the fertilizer and number three it's going to be the biplot I think it's quite easy to find a mnemonic device to remember this anyways what we're going to be doing now is create the function that is going to sort which tool is selected so here you can call it public because we're going to be calling it from the button we need this to be public so void and we can call it select pool. We can also ask for the int that is going to give us the tool number. So what we have to keep in mind here is the logic of how this is going to be working. So first, if you select a tool number that is the same as the currently selected tool, then you're just canceling your selection. And whenever we click on a tool number that is different than the current number, we're going to be associating this new tool number as the new tool. Okay, so we have two functions. First, if the tool number is equal to the selected tool, we're just going to be deselecting it and end of story. But right here, if it's different, we're going to have to select this new tool number and also make sure that all the others are deselected. That means that even for the plants, we're going to be checking to see if a plant is selected. Because if a plant is selected and you select a tool, you're now working with the tool and not planting the plant. Okay? You can't do both at the same time. You have to choose between what item you're going to be using, whether you're planting a seed or you're using a tool. So another thing you have to keep in mind is to check to see if anything is selected already 
or to just check to be sure that everything else is deselected first, is also something we're going to be using right here on our select plant. So if we're going to be using this on two places, it's better for us if we make a function down here that can be called on both of these functions. This function right here is first going to be checking if it's planting. If it's planting, it's going to be saying it's false. So is planting equal false. And the selected plant, it's going to be equal to null. Another thing we forgot is to change the plant back if it's not null. So we can just copy this here and paste it down here. So if the selected plant is different than null, then we're going to be adjusting its image. Okay? And we can also say that select plant equals null. So what we're doing here is to check to see if anything is already selected, and if it is, we're deselecting it. Now here, we can check to see if it's selecting, and if it is, what we're going to be doing is just saying that is selecting is going to be false, and we're also going to be saying that the selected tool is going to be zero. Okay, this looks great, but how are we supposed to use it? So here we can just call this function check selection, which is going to be looking for any plant or tool that is already being selected. And after that, we're going to say that is selecting is true. Sorry. And we're going to be assigning the selected tool to the tool number. Okay, for now, we don't have the visual cue yet for the selection, but this should be working to select it properly. And right here, instead of this, we can just check selection. Right here, you probably realize that we can also replace this for check selection. It's not going to be checking because we've already done the checking right over here, but it's going to be setting the planting to false and turning the button back to normal. And right here, on the deselect part, we can just check selection. We could change the name of check selection to something such as deselect all, because that's basically what's doing. It's checking to see if it's selected, and if it is selected, it's deselecting it. But I'm going to keep this name of check selection. Now what's left to do from the selection part is to visualize the selected tool. In order to do so, first, we're going to be asking for three images that are going to be the images of our buttons. And we're also going to be asking for the sprite for the normal button and for the selected button as well. Here, we just need to change this into public so we can check this on the inspector. And now all that's left for us to do is to be sure that whenever we select the tool number, we're going to be adjusting the corresponding button to show whether it's selected or not. So right here, we've just selected a button. What we need to do is we need to access this button this button's image, actually, we're going to pass an index. This index has to go from zero to a certain number. We already know that we have three buttons, so we have three button images. And in this case, this array is going to go from zero to two. But since our tool number goes from one to three, what we need to do is to say that tool number minus one is going to be the index for our button's image. Now, we gotta be very careful with this because now we need on our button's image, when we go back to the inspector, 
we need to set it on the exact order or it's not going to be working properly. So right here, we need to access its sprite and we gotta say that it's the selected and we're going to associate it to the selected button. Okay, this is looking great. But right here, when we deselect it, we need to do the same thing, but make it go back to normal. So right here, we can copy this. And just like we check over here if this plant is different than null, we're going to be checking over here if the selected tool is greater than zero. So right here we can paste what we just copied from here. And instead of tool number, we're going to be using selected tool. And right here, instead of the selected button, we're going to be using the normal button. This should be working. Let's save it and head back to Unity because before it all works, there's a lot of things that we need to set on the inspector. The first thing we're going to be doing is to set the function of these three buttons, okay? So we can just select the first one, hit shift, and select the last, and it's going to be selecting all three. We can then add a function. It's going to be asking us for the object that holds the script. We're going to be using the farm object that has the farm manager. And right here, we're going to select the farm manager script and select the correct function. So select tool. What we need to do now is to associate these buttons with the correct number. So here it's two and here it's three. Okay, this is looking great. Now, when we head back over to the farm, we can lock this on the inspector. And right here on the farm manager, you can see that the buttons image array is currently empty. What we need to do now is just create a three items array. And now it asks us for a image component. First, we drag and drop the water button. It has to be the first again because of the index. It's very important to remember this. And then second, the fertilizer. And third, our final biplot button. Now, this is asking us for the normal button sprite and the selected button sprite. We can go to our sprites and drag and drop this first one and the second one. Now it's the moment of truth. Let's see if it's working. So right now we can select the corn and it's buying properly. We can select the sunflower and it cancels the corn and selects the sunflower. We can cancel the sunflower and it seems that nothing's broken here. But now let's check to see if when we have a selected flower, the tools behave properly. So right here, we can see that the water was selected and the sunflower was deselected. And now we can see we've selected the fertilizer. And at last, the biplot. It seems like it's working properly. So that was it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'm actually celebrating today because on this past week we've just reached a hundred subscribers and I know it's not a lot but it means a lot to me and thank you so much for watching thank you so much for subscribing if you want to see more videos such as this one and you're not already subscribed please consider subscribing and if this video was helpful to you consider leaving a like and if you have any questions leave them down in the comments below I'll do my best to answer them if it's already out you can go watch part 7 right now. Guys, I swear, this time part 7 is the last, I promise. I just had to split the videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!